Hey, Facebook is uh, Gus Ricard here doing a Facebook Live. Obviously, today I'm talking about stress and pain or stress in the musculoskeletal system with the topic, is stress making my neck hurt? Yes, it is. My neck is sore and I believe it's from stress, uh, which is why I decided to do this Facebook Live. Hey, I've recently been through a really stressful time, going through a breakup, moving home, um, stressful stuff at work, like, you know, running a business and everything is always stressful. Uh, and I, I, I'm pretty good at managing stress, at being aware of when I'm stressed and, and when I need rest and, you know, lowering stress by making sure I'm getting enough sleep and making sure I'm eating right and drinking enough water and things like that. So first of all, I just want to point out when I say stress, I'm not just talking about the, the perceived stress that we have when we go through a really stressful period. I'm talking about the whole compilation of physiological stresses that are uh, that are uh, affecting the body at any one time. So I'm going to use the definition of stress that anything that uh, creates a, a stress response in the body is a stressor. And uh, the stress response is characterized by increase in the, the stress hormone cortisol and increase in the sympathetic nervous system. So the sympathetic nervous system is your fight or flight system. And it's, it's, uh, it's correlated with the stress hormone cortisol. Um, so when we look at it like that, we see that anything that there, it makes a much broader, gives stress a much broader meaning. So if you think if you, if you're dehydrated, you're likely to be stressed. Uh, if you eat the wrong food, if you eat a, a meal that has too much sugar for your system, if you eat a meal with preservatives and emulsifiers and artificial stuff, that too uh, is going to cause a stress response, cause stress in your system. Um, as is exercise. You know, we need stressors. Stress is not always a bad thing. But when we go through stressful periods, like when there's a lot of psychological stress, we, we, most of the stress alleviating behavior that we have tends to actually increase stress on a physiological perspective. And the, the body has ways of, of dumping stress. As I mentioned in the, the, uh, the brief, that one of those ways is to dump stress into the musculoskeletal system. It happens in a few ways. One is through organs actually have direct referral to muscles via uh, the, the segment that innervates them. So as the, the visceral nerve supply goes back to the spine, there is a, a little junction there. There's a tract that uh, muscles are innervated from. So excess stress in the, in the organ, if there's inflammation, it will refer back to the spinal cord and then through the muscles. So you can have decreased oxygen and decreased function of a muscle and even pain in a muscle. It also works that when we're in a fight or flight state, we tend to go into a protective posture. If you think if someone throws a punch at you or uh, throws a ball at you or if something's coming at you and you're, you're not expecting it, you go into this reflexive position, which is to protect your vital organs, right? And it happens uh, in, in a gross sense in, during those times of uh, when we're startled. You know, you notice your jaw tenses up, your upper traps tense up, pec minor at the front here gets engaged, your biceps engage, everything that is pulling you into the fetal position that is going to protect everything at the front here, all those soft vital organs will, uh, will be... Uh, increase when you're in a, in a highly stressed situation. But under low level of stress, those things happen at a lower level. So if you're always stressed or if you're going through a really stressful period, those muscles are going to be upregulated all the time. That's going to start to pull on joints and create compression and create less movement, which is how, uh, which is one way joints and muscles, joints in particular, get waste products out and nutrition in. So it goes on. Um, in the Czech program, so we use, this is Paul Czech's totem pole. I'm just going to 
show you a picture from one of my manuals here. You can see the top there is breathing. Below that is mastication. That's the function of your TMJ and your bite, then your vision, then your hearing and vestibular function, the upper cervical spine, viscera, the emotions, which is a floating symbol, down to the pelvis and the bottom, the spine and the, the limbs, the slave joints. So the musculoskeletal system is right, here's my finger, there down the bottom of everything. What this means is that, because this is the way that the body uh, prioritizes things, it's the hierarchy. You, you saw breathing is right at the top. Above breathing is actually the psyche. So if, it, you know, an example is that because breathing is so important to uh, survival that your body will sacrifice just about anything to keep you breathing. You know, it doesn't, if someone's got a food intolerance and they have inflamed airways and their sinuses are all blocked up, the body doesn't mind bringing the head forward to open up the airways, even if it means wearing out a cervical joint in your neck. Same with TMJ dysfunction. If there's inflammation in your TMJ, that was the second thing there, that uh, your body will reflexively bring your head forward to prevent wearing of the TMJ. So on it goes all the way down. And I've noticed this firsthand. So I've been through quite a stressful period. I kept training. I did a workout on the rings uh, about a week ago. I did some muscle ups and skin the cats and stuff. And the next morning when I woke up, my my AC joint was really sore. And it's gone, it's gone down, but you can see the AC joint there is, is swollen. You can see it kind of sticking up. It was like, it looked like a tennis ball. So I'm assuming that I've like, I must have torn a ligament or ruptured something. I can feel as well if I load it, if I put my hand behind my back and I'm, I'm um, traction the joint there, that it, it hurts, but it's a kind of weird pain. Um, yeah, so that was, that was what happened. The stress led to me probably not paying attention when I was training or to uh, my body had putting putting energy and resources somewhere other than recovery and the workouts leading up to that one or whatever happened because I didn't notice it actually at the time. It's it swelled up and it started to hurt. So then over the next few days, obviously I haven't been training. I've been moving. I've been doing stuff specifically to keep it moving and to keep it in position. Uh, but what I noticed is a, a pattern is arising. One, when I look in the mirror, I'm noticing this shoulder is kind of pulled forward and that's the pec minor there. So remember I said the fight or flight system is going to pull everything into that protective posture. With shoulder injuries, you go into the broken wing posture and you'll see it as some, if someone's broken their arm or dislocated their shoulder, they, they're going to nurse their arm like a broken wing. If with chronic pain or with things that aren't so severe, all the muscles that pull you into that broken wing posture are going to start to tighten up. So the pec minor, the bicep, the upper trap, the levator scap. So I started to notice just my shoulders kind of being pulled forward. And then my upper trap is really tight. Like there's a big knot in there and I'm massaging it. I'm working the lower trap uh, and it's alleviating it, but it's still starting to... It's still got a, this knot that just keeps coming back. And now I'm starting to notice my neck is uh, starting to get some kind of trigger points down there. And again, I'm, I'm mobilizing it. I'm kind of working. I'm strengthening everything that is being shut down, all the phasic muscles, which are the ones opposing all of those muscles. And that's helping. And I'm, I'm still functioning well and it's getting better. Um, it was interesting as well because I also had some other stuff going on too where the front of my right hip started to get kind of sore and impinged. Impingement is when you have two, two surfaces kind of approximating in the hip joint. It's when you come down into a squat or pull your knee into your chest and you'll feel this jamming at the front. Um, so I started to get some impingement and after a few days of that, my lower back started to get really sore as well. And I started, I'd also had some digestive stuff where I felt full. I felt it's like, I just felt full all the time. Um, so again, this is all, you know, the musculoskeletal system and the viscera. So on here again, the musculoskeletal stuff down the bottom and the viscera here being affected by my mind, by my psyche and what's going on 
uh, elsewhere in my life. And then the organs, probably my stomach referring, or my liver even referring into the meridians that run down the front of your hip uh, or the, the fascial lines down the front of your hip and tightening stuff up there. So I went, on Sunday I went and got acupuncture. I went to a Chinese uh, doctor and acupuncturist and got acupuncture and that kind of freed the hip up and stopped my lower back hurting. Uh, but yeah, there's still, I've still got the underlying kind of thing here in my shoulder. And if I wasn't really managing it really well, I know that this would be leading to all this neck tension and headache and stuff. And so what happens with stuff like this, like I'm, this, this is not a bad injury. Like if I had to rate the pain, it's at about a two. So it's, you know, I'm not wearing a sling. I'm still moving. I'm, I'm, I'm modifying the movements that I do, but I don't want to stop that moving in any way. But there is this dysfunction happening. The other thing I'm noticing when I move my shoulder, I'm getting a clunking happening in my in the SC joint here. And that's, no, that's actually gone now, but I was getting a clunking there. So whatever's happened there is leading to dysfunction throughout my whole shoulder girdle, up into my neck. You know, the stress is also done stuff, you know, is affecting viscera and down into my hip and lower back as well. So what, what happens, as I said, I'm, I'm pretty aware of my body because I use it a lot and I have for a long time. I've had a lot of injuries and had to rehab them. I've had a lot of health challenges and had to, to work through those. So I'm very aware of this stuff and I'm trained to kind of see it all as well. But what happens with most people is they don't notice this, you know, or they, or they go, oh, it's just two. It's not that bad. I'm just going to keep training. And I could keep doing overhead pressing and stuff like that. And I don't think I'd really notice it. It might be sore sore after the workout <clears throat> but I could probably push through especially if I had the mentality of no pain no gain I probably would push through it and what I'd notice I probably wouldn't notice that or notice the knot in my upper trap because I'm only noticing that because I'm feeling around there and I'm only noticing my neck here because I'm feeling around there as well this would keep getting worse and worse and it might manifest as, as headaches or tension in the jaw or maybe that would start to get really bad or your neck would start to crack and click and become neck pain and <clears throat> most of the time it's not until you've actually noticed the pain in your neck or somewhere else for a few weeks or months that you actually go and do something about it right and this is what happens with most people that come and see me is that they've got you know the problem is a pain in the neck or the low back or something you know their knee or their foot or something and it's been there for months and we can always track it back to something to an event not always a traumatic uh injury often it is a traumatic injury elsewhere um you know like a sprained ankle that leads to lower back pain and a knee issue later on or something and that's why when people go and see uh therapists that are only trained to isolate and aren't trained holistically with chronic stuff because you know the whole the whole um medical model is built on acute trauma and acute um illness which which really just isolates an area and doesn't look at how the whole works together so unless you're seeing a holistic practitioner and there are a lot of holistic practitioners now check practitioners a lot of chiropractors and osteos are trained holistically um but what happens usually is people have the, the, the place that manifests the pain will be the knee or the low back that, you know, originally it was because of a sprained ankle or even because of <clears throat> something going on with their jaw. Um, that when you go and see a practitioner that's just trained to isolate, they look at the knee and they, they treat the knee and that doesn't get any better. Uh, so my point is this is just a, a point in case of how <clears throat> dysfunction can spread from one area to another or even spread from something in the psyche to the musculoskeletal system and then to move around you know the body is is a cybernetic being it's a system of interrelated systems and uh it, 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 it it's very hard to isolate things you know the whole the word holistic means that the sum of the parts is greater some of the parts is greater than the whole. Is that right? Some of the whole is greater than the parts. But the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, 
and we see this in like ecosystems and in the physical body and in all complex systems that you have emergent properties which is like you, you have new things arising that uh, aren't a part of any of the one parts going into that system um, and what it means in those systems in any complex open system like the body is that dysfunction in one system will be spread throughout the whole system to stop the system breaking down and to keep it functioning to some extent <clears throat> with the body with the human body unfortunately the musculoskeletal system is not very important to survival compared to things like your organs your jaw the function of breathing or staying balanced you know you can survive with a sore back or a sore shoulder for years you know we actually can't survive that long with a toothache you know if, if you have a toothache that's so bad that you can't eat your time's limited we're lucky now we have dentistry and medicine and stuff excuse me for hundreds of hundreds and thousands of generations we evolved without medicine and without uh dentistry and our body had to evolve these mechanisms to <clears throat> allow us to survive so that's my story for today uh if anyone has any questions shoot them through otherwise i'm going to keep it nice and brief for you guys today i hope it's been enjoyable i'll see you all later ciao